Hey everybody, welcome to today's webinar. Uh, I will hand it over to coaches Lindsay and Ryan here in a minute, but just a couple of items to take care of for those of you who are new to our webinars. We will hopefully have time for some questions at the end of the presentation, and you can type those into the question box in the lower portion of your control panel. We will be posting a recording of the webinar online as well, but if you would like a copy of the presentation in PDF format, or if your question does not get answered today, please email our support inbox, which will be shown at the end of the webinar today. All right, I will pass it on to Lindsay to get started. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Um, Coach Ryan and I today will be talking about one of the biggest barriers that we encounter with our coaching participants, time. For today's agenda, Though there are many areas of health and wellness that tend to get overlooked and neglected because of our busy schedules, we'll be discussing two of the bigger aspects of health. I will be chatting about the nutrition side of today's discussion, and Coach Ryan will educate us on the exercise portion. So let's begin. Meal planning and meal prep. So many, if not all of you, have heard the terms meal plan and meal prep. They are often phrased together, but they can mean two entirely different things. Meal planning is organizing or coordinating a meal ahead of time, while meal preparation, or also known as meal prep, is cooking ahead or organizing a ready-to-cook meal. Now, meal planning can be as simple as grocery shopping for specific ingredients to make certain meals or figuring out what ingredients you already have available in the house and planning out your week of meals. For example, you know you have a bag of brown rice in the pantry and a package of chicken breast in the fridge, so you plan to have chicken on the grill and a side of rice for Thursday night. And you can also plan on making enough to have leftovers for your lunch the next day, so a win-win. A tool that can help families stay on track is a bulletin board, listing out the days of the week and that night's meal. Even a standard calendar can do the trick, though. Just something that serves its purpose of keeping your family on track and aware of what meals are in store during the busy work week. Now on to meal prep. Some of you have heard this saying before, failing to prepare is preparing to fail. I know this might sound a little harsh, but it is so true especially when it comes to preparing your meals. Most of us are pretty busy in our day-to-day -day lives. Whether you're a single parent, a student, or working full-time, it can be hard to cook all of your meals at home each and every night. This is where meal prep can quickly become your best friend. Without meal prep, you increase your chances of eating junk foods or convenience food on your busiest of days. So what does meal prep entail? Meal prep can mean different things to different people, so it's important to find um, a routine that works best for you. Essentially, meal prep should save you time in the kitchen and make it easier for you to eat healthier meals during the week. You may need to use a little bit of trial and error to get settled into a routine that suits your lifestyle and preferences, though. For example, if you always find yourself in a hurry to get out of the door in the morning and your breakfast consists of something like a granola bar, then meal prepping breakfast beforehand will help you. Likewise, if you struggle to get dinner together because you work late, you should focus on preparing dinners. Some techniques to meal prep could include cooking items in bulk, like that bag of brown rice that you have, cooking at one time portioning it out among five different containers for your lunch during the week, or preparing freezer meals on a Sunday afternoon that you can just pull out of the freezer and pop into the slow cooker or oven when you're really limited on time for the week ahead. Now, obviously, both of these techniques take time of their own to prepare, but think of it as an investment into yours and your family's health. You're investing time now to save time later, rather than just going through the drive through every night you're too busy to cook a full meal at home. This investment can mean just a couple hours on a Sunday afternoon to both shop and prepare lunches or freezer dinners for the entire week. So far, we've touched on the planning your meals ahead of time. Now we'll chat about the tools to impl implement your prep and, of course, the cooking process. Along with the tool of the bulletin board that I mentioned earlier, 
one of the biggest assets to your kitchen arsenal is going to be the beloved slow cooker. Yes, that kitchen item that you usually get three separate ones as wedding gifts can truly be your best friend in regards to healthy and low maintenance meals for you and your family. It's really as simple as one, two, three. One, you load up your slow cooker with your choice of protein, veggies, grains, spices, etc. Two, you set your temperature and time according to your recipe. And three, you enjoy a hassle-free meal. If your household is like mine, and you, use, and you already utilize your slow cooker several nights or per week, another handy tool to save on so much washing in between your meals um, is slow cooker liners. Without listing any particular brands, I personally recently went out and bought an eight count of slow cooker liners for about four bucks at our local grocery store. Or you can even find some great deals online. Whenever I do chat with participants about utilizing their slow cookers, I usually get the question of, well, what do I put in my slow cooker? There's not really a clear-cut answer to this because it depends on what you like to eat. A good rule of thumb, though, is to follow the season. Just ask yourself, what sort of fruit and veggies are in season at that time? Produce that's currently in season is going to be the best tasting. Right now, in the hotter season of the year, not many people want to be eating soups or stews, so let your slow cooker prepare some layer favorites like shredded chicken and veggies for tacos or pulled pork sandwiches. And keep in mind, you can also find hundreds upon hundreds of other recipe ideas on the internet. Breakfast. The meal that's known as the most important meal of the day, and rightly so, is also the most commonly skipped meal of the day. According to a 2011 study, 31 million U.S. consumers skip breakfast each and every day. That means one out of every 10 people are not starting their day off with something in their stomachs. I do want to drive home the importance of having something for breakfast. Research suggests that regularly eating a healthy and well-balanced breakfast may help you lose weight and maintain any weight loss you may have already accomplished. It's so beneficial because a great, a regular and balanced breakfast can help reduce hunger and overeating throughout the day. It may help you make healthier choices all day long, and it can help you have more energy throughout the, your busy day, which can help with other, um, other aspects of your day, such as exercise, which we'll be chatting about later. Let's go try it. Some tips and tricks for breakfast. Um, because of the fact that mornings usually are a hectic and rushed time for many people and families, there this is where preparation planning ahead of time is truly glorious for you. A great way to start off the day is with a protein source to help make us feel full and keep our energy level up. So if it's something that you're able to eat and something that you enjoy to eat, I always recommend eggs. Whether you do have 10 extra minutes to cook and eat them at home, or if you don't have time, then take 15 minutes on a Sunday night and hard boil an entire carton of eggs. Then you're all set for the entire week to just reach in the fridge, crack and peel, and head out the door with your breakfast in tow. Another thing you can do is pull out that old faithful slow cooker again and make a breakfast egg bake loaded with veggies the night before, and all you have to do is set it on low while you sleep. Or we even have individuals in our very own office who will mix their egg bake ingredients together, pour it into a cupcake pan so they have their individual servings, and then they'll freeze the servings. So that way um, they pull them out of the freezer in the morning during the week and they just take them to work, heat them up in the microwave and start their work day that way. The same concept of using the slow cooker can be used to start off your day with fiber from oatmeal. Rather than eating instant flavored oatmeal packets, which by the way are loaded with sugar, you can cook steel cut oats and then flavor them with your own cinnamon, chopped nuts, or even some fresh fruit. Now we've come on to getting the supplies and ingredients for these healthy and time-saving meals. Number one rule to grocery shopping is always, always, always have a grocery list before you begin your shopping trip. This is not only a rule to help prevent 
unnecessary and unhealthy purchases from entering your cart, but also to prevent wandering around the store and saving our precious time, which is exactly what this entire webinar is about, saving time. Once you have your grocery list written down, here are just five pointers to help your grocery shopping experience go even faster. Number one, decide on which sales you'll seek out before you head to the store. Trying to clip coupons and compare markdowns while the store can be very distracting. Number two, organize your grocery list by food category. Itemize your list by produce, dairy, protein, and frozen items. This will help with that annoying moment when you realize you've forgotten something five aisles back. Number three, if you're not doing a huge shop, skip the big push cart. When you have so much space, you're more likely to fill it up with groceries, even if you, they aren't on your list. Plus, hand baskets tend to get heavy easily, so you'll want to drop it off at the checkout line as soon as possible. Number four, only shop the perimeter of the store. This is where your produce, protein, and your dairy lies, while the inside is usually filled with processed foods. So if you limit your shopping trip to the exterior aisles of the store, you'll not just shop faster, but you'll also shop healthier. And number five, stock up on freezer items and non-perishables just once per month. Make one large trip every month for these items and the rest of your trips will be quicker and less expensive since all you're grabbing is fresh fruit and perishables during the week. This will help save time on those busy weeknights that are already too short for all of us. Now, this slide isn't necessarily about saving time, but I wanted to provide another reason for us to plan our meals ahead. Planning doesn't just save on our watches, but it also saves on our wallets. The Natural Resource Defense Council gathered data from multiple sources and concluded that Americans routinely throw away 25% of their groceries. This costs a family for somewhere in the ballpark of $1,400 to $2,300 per year. So imagine bringing home eight bags of groceries and immediately throwing two entire bags straight into the trash. The apples never make it to the lunch boxes. The milk never hits the morning coffee mug. No one would spend hundreds of dollars on groceries and promptly throw a quarter of them away. And yet, it's happening each and every day. Sorry about the pun, but consider this some food for thought next time you go to the grocery store without a list and without a plan. So now we're going to switch gears into the exercise portion with Coach Ryan. All right. Thank you very much, Coach Lindsay. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Ryan. So I'm going to be walking you guys through the exercise portion of this webinar in order to try to fit some more uh, exercise into your busy schedule on the go, trying to save you some time. So I'm going to start off by just giving you guys the two main points that are absolutely crucial to your success going forward, and that's going to be with consistency and intensity. Um, to start off, you know, with consistency, you know, you have to be consistent throughout the week, week in and week out, to make sure that you continue to make progress going the right direction. Um, if you guys end up falling off track, you end up going backwards twice as fast as you would making progress in the right direction. Um, for intensity-wise, you know, you need to be able to adjust any activity to kind of fit your own personal fitness levels. So wherever you're at, you need to be able to make those adjustments. Um, like let's say if you have a more intense workout planned, you're going to accomplish a lot more in a shorter amount of time, which in turn will eventually save you a lot of time for other things. Um, it is recommended that you get about 150 minutes of moderate exercise a week at least, or 75 minutes of vigorous exercise. So if you had to break that down, it would look like basically getting about 30 minutes a day uh, for five days of the week, getting that moderate exercise. And you can imagine how much shorter that would be if you actually push the pace, really getting your body working for a vigorous exercise. Um, so now I'm going to just start going over two main areas for you. The first one here is going to be at home, and then eventually I'm going to talk about how we can help you guys out on the go. So as far as at home, you know, I'm sure a lot of you guys have family members, and these can be people who are, that can really help you stay on track or, or keep yourself accountable. Um, so we'll start, you know, a lot of people have kids, you know, so if you have kids, you could take them to the park, for example. Uh, a lot of parks have jungle gyms, which means you have like a pull-up bar, maybe some stairs, other things that are definitely going to challenge your body. Um, and so definitely try to, you know, participate. You know, if your kids are having fun, you're having fun, you're definitely not even thinking about all the calories that are definitely being burned and how much you're improving yourself. 
Um, if you don't feel like you really want to participate in the jungle gym, maybe there's a bunch of kids around or something, maybe it's just walking laps around the, uh, the playground, you know, while they play. You know, you can keep an eye on them, still burning calories the whole time. It's definitely going to, you know, knock out two birds with one stone. Um, a lot of uh, kids as well these days, they like to do a lot of video games. So we want to get them outside as much as possible, but one of the ones that's actually pretty effective is the Wii. So this is something, you know, you can participate participate in as well. You know, like there's things where you can do dancing and a lot of other stuff that gets your body involved. Um, and that's, you know, just having a great time. You're, you're spending quality time with your kids. I mean, it's just great all around. So definitely consider what your possibilities are. Um, another one there is going to be pets. So, you know, say you have a dog. You know, you, that's just a great excuse to get outside, go for walks. You know, you can take them out before and after work, maybe at a lunch break. You know, whenever you can find time to do that, it's going to be very healthy for them, but it's also just a great way to get you out and get you moving. Um, if you have spouses as well, you know, that's just uh, another thing you should be doing pretty much everything with them if you can. You know, you're spending quality time together. Uh, choose any fun activities. It doesn't just have to be walking or doing the dogs. You can find anything to do. Um, but really, what you're doing there is really just keeping yourself on track while you're also keeping everyone else in your family pretty healthy. Um, next one here is going to be chores and picking up the pace. So as far as chores go, I know those are things, you know, you really don't enjoy doing throughout the day. It'd be things like laundry, doing the dishes, vacuuming, um, you know, cooking at times, depending if you like it. Um, but I mean, really just getting up and doing it and get yourself moving is definitely going to help you out a lot. You know, there are things you can do as well, um, like say doing lunges while you're using the vacuum. Uh, you can use, do squats maybe while you're doing dishes or, you know, folding clothes, those type of things. Uh, personally, I like to throw on some music. You know, it kind of lightens the mood and, and keeps things pretty enjoyable throughout the entire process. Um, and, you know, even if you want to bust out some dance moves, I think that would definitely help you burn even more calories, have a, have a blast while you're doing it. Um, as far as picking up the pace, you know, this can be something you can do with any sort of activity throughout the day. You know, let's use, you know, stairs as an example. If you're going upstairs for your work, whatever, um, or maybe you're just walking from place to place, if you just do it a little bit faster, you're definitely burning more calories and all these little time frames that you're making up by getting those places quicker is going to add up and give you a little more free time throughout your day. Now, the next one here is sports and groups. Um, you know, sports is, a, is a, really a big one that a lot of people like to kind of shift over towards or use that as their physical activity for the week, so that's great. You know, there's a million different activities out there. You know, I would choose one that maybe gets you moving a little bit more. So if we'd use examples, maybe softball is one that's maybe not as much of a physical activity. Sure, you do run around the bases. You might be standing still a little bit for a lot of it, whereas if you actually took maybe indoor soccer, that would be something where you're keeping your heart rate up for an extended period of time. It's already planned. You're already doing it. Um, you know, get your heart rate up, and, and you can take breaks when you need. But those type of things are really what you want to think about while you're going through these processes. Now, groups, you know, those are pretty much the same thing. You have groups like running, walking, biking. You know, there's so many different ones out there. But I think this is a great way to motivate yourself just to get out there and get to these places. You know, make sure you're getting exercise in. Um, the good thing about doing a group activity is, you know, you have the kind of same people with the same mindset and same goals uh, in mind as you. So it kind of puts you in a very comfortable situation. So that's a very good way to make sure you get it done. As far as the best bang for your buck, I think as far as for exercise, you know, Swimming is a great one, not only for just any sort of person, but if you're injured, you know, and you have, you know, knee issues, ankle issues, that's something that you're taking a lot of the pressure off your joints. Um, it's going to make you feel better going through the whole workout. And you don't really think about it since you're kind of, you know, cool, you're not really sweating or, or feeling too hot, but it, it's really do, doing a great job at burning calories and helping you achieve any goal that you set for yourself. Even if you can't swim, you know, there's usually a shallow end of the pool that, you know, you can walk in, run in, you know, it's usually pretty safe to kind of hang out in that area. Um, but, you know, water resistance workouts are awesome, so definitely consider those. Um, next one here is going to be resistance training. Now, this one's my personal favorite one, uh, just because, you know, I have a background in this kind of an area. And really, uh, you know, you burn the most calories in a short amount of time while doing this. You know, it's, it's not exactly saying, hey, let's go jump on a treadmill. You know, that's something your body is made to do. It's not going to, you know, burn as many calories as if you add some added weight, like, say, doing um, a squat with, like, a dumbbell in your hands or something like that. Um, doing this, you know, you can actually get in and out of the gym, you know, in 20 or 30 minutes where you're just exhausted. You wipe yourself out with all the energy you, you ate or consumed that day. So you're doing a wonderful job, and you don't really have to, you know, do it that much. You can actually hit that vigorous mark and only be in there for 15 or 20 minutes at times. Um, as far as body weight movements, at home, uh, I would say this one is 
is good anywhere, not just at home, but really it comes down to what we talked about before with intensity. If you really are struggling for time, make it a vigorous workout. If you have a little bit more, then maybe it's a, a moderate, a little bit lighter workout, but you could do things like watching TV, doing uh, like push-ups or jumping jacks, you know, just not even having to focus too much on it, but still accomplishing your goal for the day. All right, so next one here, we're going to switch it over and go to on the road. So if you like say um, the first one here is vacation, you know if you're taking a vacation, I would like you to do a little bit of planning ahead of time. Maybe check out a map, see what's available around those places you're staying at. Um, if there's a park or something like that, you know you're going to have some downtime probably. So maybe plan on going to the park, throw some frisbee around, do whatever you have to do to kind of be active, have a great time, get some sun. Um, and then there's a lot of new things you can try. You know that's one of the cool parts about it, like maybe renting a bike or a kayak, maybe rent a surfboard. You know those type of things are awesome. They're they're gonna you're just gonna have a blast. You're not even gonna consider that you're doing exercise, so you don't even have to worry about it or worry about the time factor. When it comes down to that as well, you know a lot of times you can just kind of get out and go. You know get outside, walk places, see what's around. You might actually find some pretty interesting places, and if you're walking there, you're definitely burning a lot of calories. Uh, so I think that'll be a really good way to just have a great time, and see what's out there. Um, and the next one here is hotels. A lot of people stay at hotels. They wonder what to do. You know, there are workout rooms at most of these places, which you know usually aren't the most quality. They're not very big. They don't have a lot of options. But it's definitely better than not having anything at all. So if you are, you know, away from home, you can still get a good workout in. And once again, you know, the pool is always a great option. We talked about swimming, so keep that in mind. Um, and then for the next part is body weight movements in your hotel room. You know, you could do that while watching TV, maybe you're just hanging out, you know, that type of stuff is, is going to be great for you. Um, but like I said, it's just knocking two birds out at one time. So I think that's something you definitely should consider. Um, and then you could even bring your own equipment in to really knock out even more variety. Like, say if you're in a hotel room, maybe you're just, uh, you know, driving your truck around, you know, whatever that is. Having, like, say, a jump rope in there, some dumbbells, you know, maybe a yoga mat. This is going to be something you can use, and it doesn't really take up too much space, which is pretty great. Uh, so you really shouldn't, you know, have any reason why you shouldn't really have be able to do that in your normal routine. Um, chain fitness centers, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of them out there these days that you know have the option of going to multiple different ones. You don't have to just belong to one; you you could belong to all of them. You know, they're spread out across the entire nation. So if you're traveling, you know, maybe take a look, see if there's one kind of in that area, and then you don't even have to feel like you're getting outside your routine. You kind of go in a similar situation, similar atmosphere, and that'll definitely keep you on track um, and really kind of save a little bit of time, so you don't have to worry about getting that exercise in and stressing about it. And then technology, that's that's something that's really gone a long ways over the years. You know, there's many phone apps, computer apps out there, YouTube videos. Um, there's a variety of different workouts. You never have to do the same one in a row. Um, and at the same time, some of these apps will even show you exactly what these exercises will look like. So you'll see correct form, exactly how to do it, how long to do it. Um, and then even other little parts of them could be like tracking, you know, food, exercise, sleep habits. You can kind of see exactly what you're doing, and that can be pretty motivating in itself. All right, so now we're going to go into the little things. Now, this category is just stuff that you can do throughout the day that really kind of helps save you time and get that exercise in really with what you would normally be doing. So the first one is be your own transportation. Uh, if you want to walk or bike to work or to the store, I mean, definitely go for it. Right? That would definitely be the way to you know knock it out for that day. You don't have to worry about doing anything after you get off. Uh, if you have stairs, you know, always try to use those instead of the elevator, especially if you have many flights to climb. That's that's a great workout. And just like Coach Lindsay was saying earlier, you know, carrying your groceries in a basket is is a great way to challenge yourself. Really, you want to find any sort of way to do that kind of a challenge with whatever you kind of face throughout the day. Um, swing your workouts up. You know, this is definitely for someone who might not have quite enough time to fit a 30-minute workout in every day. Uh, so maybe you want to do two 15-minute workouts, three 10-minute workouts. You know, you could do them before and after work, uh, whenever it really kind of fits in your schedule. But that that still adds up and is definitely quality at the end of the day. It doesn't have to always be all at the same time. Now breaks. This is another one you can really take advantage of, especially if you have to be at work. You know, you have a lunch break, and and Coach Lindsay was talking about ways to help save you time. You know, you want to bring your own food in, and that's going to actually save you time, so you don't have to go out to eat. Instead, you have extra 15 minutes, maybe extra 45 minutes. Get outside and you know go for a walk. You know, that can be a really big part of your normal routine, and you can actually save a lot of time that way. Um, other small breaks throughout the day you could take. You know. Uh, maybe just take two minutes, you know, whenever things kind of get stressful, you know, do a little activity break, which might look like, um, you know, doing some jumping jacks, some push-ups, getting a little bit of stretching in. Uh, really, you can complete this in two minutes and feel like you refresh your body and mind and, and you can get right back at it. 
Um, but really, the, all these little breaks will add up. So if you do those plus your lunch break, you can imagine just how much you can get more fit and save yourself a lot of time in the long run. So this last section here is really going to be about planning. So uh, Lindsay made it very clear, you know, it's very important for food, for exercise, really for anything. If you want to save time, you've got to make that little bit of effort to plan things out. So like writing things in a schedule is something I think is very important, especially for exercise. You know, a lot of people don't do that, but if you actually write it down in your calendar, you're way more likely to actually follow through and get it done in that day rather than if you didn't put it in there, it's almost like saying, hey, this isn't as important as the other things I planned, so I don't really have to do it. You know, make it a priority. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, when you have things scheduled, that's going to save you time. You don't have to spend the time getting stressed out or thinking, when should I do this? It's already built in right into your day and in your schedule. Um, setting alarms, you know, this is a, probably one of my favorite ones on here just because, you know, setting an alarm maybe 30 minutes earlier than you normally would wake up just to get up early and get it done right away in the morning gives you the entire rest of the day to be yours. You get to do anything you want with it. Um, you know, you can get your spouse involved. You know, both of you guys get up. That can be a, an accountability thing where you never, like, get off track or avoid doing it. So if one of you says no, hopefully the other one will say yes. Um, otherwise, you can also set alarms throughout the day just to give you a quick reminder. Like, hey, I plan on doing a workout at this time. Maybe if I just set an alarm, I'm going to get that thought in my head, hey, I'll do a quick break, get my workout in real quick. Um, but making a priority, just like I said, is going to be very important. It is very beneficial to do exercise for your health. It does keep you strong. It maintains good muscle for you, muscle mass. Uh, it helps you control your weight, which is a big one out there. And then it also you know, helps you fight off any sort of health conditions, diseases. It boosts your energy throughout the day and helps you reduce a lot of stress and plenty of other benefits. Um, but no matter how busy you are, you should be able to find something here that helps you fit exercise into your day somewhere. Um, you know, and the, and the sad reality is, is as well as, you know, when you don't feel like you have energy at the end of the day to get a workout in, you actually have to do those workouts to start feeling more energetic later in the week. So in other words, you have to use energy to create more of it. Now, that can kind of concludes our program here. So uh, what we're going to do is go over a quick takeaway, you know, what, what we should remember going forward. And for meals, you know, we want you to remember to plan ahead, try to utilize any tools that you have in the kitchen that really help you out, make things easier, save yourself some time. And then for exercise, we want you to be very consistent with whatever you decide to do and just make sure you're pushing the intensity to accomplish any goals you set. All right, we will open up for questions. We will only have a couple minutes, but we'll open it up here in a minute or so. But just want to remind you of the upcoming webinars. Next month is Emotional Eating, and in October is Fall Food Favorites. So make sure you um, go to our blog and uh, register for those. And then here's our contact information. We are on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram. Um, again, the past webinars will be on our blog, healthcheck360blog.com. Uh, you can always email us. Again, if we don't get to your question here in the next minute or so, email us at healthcoach at healthcheck360.com or give us a call anytime. Uh, phone number's on here too. You can set up a call with a health coach. So just give us one minute and we'll start answering some questions. All right. Looks like we have a question here. It's, uh, since I 